Let's start by putting the key in the on position and putting the shifter in neutral. Now we can make our way under the hood to the negative battery terminal. Use an eight millimeter to loosen it and remove it from the battery. Make your way back inside the passenger compartment. We're gonna to come to the lower kick panel underneath the steering column. We have to remove the plastic. To do that, you're gonna find two seven millimeter headed bolts. Now, once you have both of those out, move along to the hood release latch. Go ahead and pull on that. Underneath that, you're gonna find two more seven millimeter headed bolts. Remove the pair. Now we can carefully grab onto the plastic. I'm gonna grab onto this and I'm gonna try tugging it away from the lower aspect of the dash. Go ahead and give that a quick inspection and set it aside. Now that we have that off, let's continue on by removing this metal plate. To remove this, you're gonna find five eight millimeter headed bolts. Let's remove all of them. Set that aside. Now let's move along to this area right here. We're gonna start removing the three Phillips head screws from this hole here, here, and all the way over on the driver's side. Now I'm gonna reach up along the driver's side of the steering column, and I'm gonna tilt my steering wheel down as far as I can. Now I'll use a trim tool and I'll carefully separate the two pieces of the clamshell. Go ahead and grab this. We'll carefully pull it out of here. give that a quick inspection, set it aside. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove this area here. This is the adjuster for the tilt of the steering. Go ahead and take that off of there, set it aside. Grab the lower clamshell, remove it from the steering column. Now let's have a peek underneath the steering column area. We're gonna come over towards the passenger side and start disconnecting our wiring harnesses. We'll start with this green one. Press on the little locking tab there and separate the two. Now for this center one, you're gonna have two locking tabs, one on either side. Gently separate them and remove the wiring. We'll move along to this one. Now let's move along to our overdrive switch wiring. Just carefully get in between here and separate that as well. Quick inspection. We can move along to this wiring right here. For this one, it's gonna be easiest to separate after you remove it from its mounting bracket. Up along the top here, there's a little push clip. Just carefully get in between there with something that you can pry with. To separate this, there's a rectangular tab where my thumb is. 
Go ahead and squeeze that and separate it. Have a little peek, set that aside. Now let's come to our shift indicator bracket. You're gonna find that you have a five and a half millimeter bolt that holds it in place on the steering column. Go ahead and remove that, and then we'll remove our red cable from the shifter. Moving along to the driver's side of the steering column, we're gonna have to remove this wiring harness from the lower aspect. Right in here, there's a seven millimeter headed bolt. Remove it. Now we'll use our pick. We're gonna come over to this wiring harness. There's a tab on the forward side of this. You can't see it, but generally if you just grab it with the pick, gently get in between, separate the tab, you should be able to pull this down. Continue on with the trim tool or a prying device. We're gonna go ahead and separate the wiring from this metal bracket. Now we're just gonna make sure we have the steering wheel in the locked position. Let's go ahead and take the key out of here. Grab that steering wheel. Make sure you hear it click in so it cannot turn. Now let's make our way underneath the steering column all the way to where the steering shaft goes down and through the firewall. You're gonna find that the steering shaft has a 10 millimeter pinch bolt that goes straight on through it and it holds it to the steering column. We need to remove that pinch bolt and then slide the steering shaft off of the steering column. To get this off of here, I'll give it a couple loving bonks with a pry bar and a hammer. Now this part's gonna be a little bit harder to access. You wanna make your way right inside this area, and then what you wanna do is find this. You can go ahead and carefully pop this off of here using a prying device, such as maybe a trim tool or even a screwdriver. It should pop off fairly easily. Give it a quick inspection, make sure it's still reusable. Now let's move along to this area right here. You're gonna find a metal bracket, and if you follow it to either end, you're gonna find a 13 millimeter headed nut. Let's remove the pair. For this last one, I'll make sure I'm holding the bracket. Go ahead and remove that bracket. And now we're gonna take one of our mounting nuts and we'll just start it back on the mounting stud. Now let's move along the steering column to this crossbar. On the forward side of the crossbar, on either side, you're gonna find another 13 millimeter headed nut. For the one on the passenger side, we're gonna go ahead and loosen that, remove it, and then just put it back on a couple threads. After that, we'll move over to the driver's side, fully remove that one, and leave it off. All right, now it's time for some heavy lifting. Go ahead and grab onto that steering column and lift it up. Remove the forward nut that you left on there a couple threads. Now we can just carefully lower this down so we can gain access to our last mounting point for the shifter cable. To get this out of here, I'm gonna use a pick and something that I can reach in here to push on this with. The reason for the pick is because down underneath where the cable goes into the bracket, you're gonna find a hole. Use the pick, press it in, and then go ahead and slide the cable out of here by pressing it forward. Let's carefully grab this and remove it from the vehicle. Now with this out on the bench, we have a nice clear view of the area that we're gonna be dealing with. We're gonna have to remove these two T30 screws. To do that, we'll use our T30 Torx bit. Now 
Now that we have both of those out, we have a lot of movement here. We're gonna continue on to removing our last T30 bolt from this area. Let's carefully grab onto this, turn it around, and on the back side, you're gonna find a locking clip. Now let's make our way to the back side here. We'll start removing our locking clip. You can do this with several things, such as a screwdriver or even a trim tool. Just watch your eyes as you do it. Go ahead and carefully remove that bracket. Give it a quick inspection. We'll set that aside. There it is, friends. Okay, let's get ready to install our brand new part. We'll take it and lay it down. Grab that bracket and put it onto the new part in the same way as you remove the original. After that, go ahead and take your brand new locking clip, rest it on there, slide it down, make sure it's locked in position. Once it's on there, I just use a socket, slide it over the top to carefully press it in. Go ahead and give that a wiggle. It's supposed to move around, but you wanna make sure it cannot slide apart. That feels great. Let's get this on the steering column. We're gonna slide this area right over the shifter. Set the bracket down where it belongs. We'll rest this on here. And what you're gonna notice is you actually can't get the holes to line up unless you grab onto this shaft and gently push it. Once you start pushing on it, you should be able to line up all three of your mounting bolt holes. We'll start in all three of the mounting bolts before we snug any of them. Once they're all started, we'll go ahead and snug them. All right, so let's go ahead and put this back in the vehicle. Looking inside under the dash, you can see that we still have one of our mounting nuts on the far right stud. We wanna leave that on there, so as we put the steering column in, we can rest it there. And then we're gonna continue on to our cable. As you slide this in, be very careful for all of your wiring and cables that are located behind this area. All right, so I have it resting on that one nut. Now I'm gonna move along to the cable. I'm gonna slide it back into its bracket and then lock it on. Now I'm gonna reach under the dash. I'll grab my cable. I'm gonna slide it into the slot and try to make sure I lock in my little piton. There we go, I heard a little click. Now I'm gonna grab onto it. I'm gonna try as hard as I can to pull it out of there. I wanna ensure that it does not fall out. Super important. Now we can take that other piece and we'll put it onto its lever. Press that right on. You can use a pry bar or your thumb. Once it's on there, of course, give it a tug. Once again, needs to be secure. Let's lift up that steering column. Now I can start putting on my mounting nuts. I'm gonna start with the far forward driver's one. Get that on there a little bit, leave it loose. Now we'll go ahead and tilt up the steering column here. We'll line up the mounting bolt holes. Now I'm gonna hold that up. I'll start my bracket on there and then start on each of my mounting nuts. Now, while that's still loose and we can wiggle it around, I'm gonna continue on with the steering shaft. I'll line it up and slide it up and onto the steering column. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is take our pinch bolt. If you're not replacing the pinch bolt, it's important to at least make sure you use some blue thread locker. Go ahead and slide it right through here. We'll bottom this out and then we're gonna to torque this to 25 foot pounds. Now we can tighten all of our mounting nuts that hold up our steering column. Let's continue by reattaching our wiring. We'll start with this large one and then snug up your seven millimeter headed bolt on the driver's side. All right, so right there it bottomed out. 
I'm just gonna take it a little bit further just to make sure it's snug. Of course, I'll give every electrical connector a tug once I feel as though I have it connected in. Now let's move along here. We're reconnecting our overdrive switch. Got a nice click there, give it a tug. Now we're gonna re-secure this. Just go ahead and slide that right up into the bracket. Now we can come over towards the passenger side. We'll continue over here. Green to green. Get that one in there. Let's get this large connector in here. Give it a nice tug. Resecure it. Let's get this little three wire connector reconnected as well. Now let's continue on to our indicator wire. We're gonna take this and we'll put it right up over the hook. There we are. Now we'll bring the indicator bracket down and put it onto the steering column. After that, we can put in our five and a half millimeter bolt and snug it up. Now we can make our way above the steering column to the dash. We can see exactly where the shift indicator is. Now, of course, at this point, you wanna match up the indicator to whichever gear you're in. For us in particular, we have this vehicle in neutral. So all I wanna do is go ahead and turn that little cog until my indicator is right over the end. After that, I'll continue shifting into each of the gears and make sure it lines up perfectly and adjust accordingly. Turning it this way, you can tell it's moving away from the end. I need to go the other way. At this point, I have it pretty much directly in the center of the end. You don't want to stop here. Like I said, go ahead and test all of the gears and make sure it lines up. Perfect. Now we're going to take the tilt rod and start it in there a few good threads. We don't need to tighten it yet because we will be re-removing it. Once it's in there, go ahead and give it a tug and tilt your steering wheel down. Let's put on the upper clamshell. Let's make sure we line up this area here. It should want to slide right down. Do the same on the other side. That was easy. Let's remove that tilt lever again. And now we can reinstall our lower clamshell. As you bring this up, you wanna make sure your tabs line up with their alignment points. Once you feel as though you have them lined up, continue on with putting in your three mounting bolts. Once they're all started, snug them up. Go ahead and put on your tilt knob again. We'll screw this in by hand as far as we can. Then we'll go ahead and cover it with a rag and give it a little snug with some pliers. Let's get this metal protective plate on here. As always, line up all of your bolt holes, start in all of the bolts and then snug them up.
Now we can put on our lower trim panel. Looking at the back side, you're gonna find that you have pitons that protrude out from either side of it. Those need to fit into their corresponding holes in the dash. Go ahead and wiggle it around until it feels like it lines up and press it in. Make your way under here and start in both of your mounting bolts on either side. We'll leave those loose and we'll continue on to our hood release. Get this lined up, I'll go ahead and start in both of my mounting bolts. After I have both of these started, we'll snug all four of the lower bolts. Let's go ahead and reconnect our negative battery terminal and make sure it's nice and snug. Okay friends, we got our steering column back together. Of course now at this point, you're going to want to make sure that you test its functionality one more time. Put the key in the on position, run it through all the gears. After you're sure that it functions properly, go ahead and put it back in park, turn off the ignition. Start it up, run it back through the gears. As you get into reverse, make sure it starts backing up. Put it in drive, make sure you go forward. Aside from that, go ahead and take it for a road test, and of course, I recommend checking your alignment. Thanks for watching.